Good evening, everyone. This is Cinnamon Noir. And welcome to Spelunky by Derek Yu. Now, there's a lot of videos of Spelunky on the internet these days, and you might be thinking, this is not Spelunky. And you're partially right. This is classic Spelunky, which I honestly prefer to the new one for reasons I might explain in a little while, or I might not. But first, you get treated to this kick ass music. Greg, do you know anything about Spelunky? Hmm. Well, Derek Yu made this game in 2009, mostly by himself. I am not sure what other games Derek Yu has made, actually, but uh, I definitely like this one. Spelunky is basically my addiction. I play it way too much. You will probably see me in the score room, and you will notice the amount of plays this game has, and it does make me seem like kind of a sad loser. So here's the tutorial. Uh, I'll just explain some of the things as they come up. You press Z to jump, and you can hang on ledges, which is very useful. There are some jumps you just cannot make blindly. You whip by pressing the X button, like Indiana Jones, and uh, if you fall too much, you get hurt, like you just saw there. But you can crawl over the edge, and that lets you hang off of the edge, which helps prevent fall damage. Crates are opened by pressing up and X at the same time. Now, crates usually contain gems, however, rarely they can contain a bomb that will hurt you if you're not careful. In fact, bombs are a one-hit kill in this game. You may notice at the top that there are four uh, heart pieces. I just showed there. you got to be careful with rocks, because if you throw them against a wall and they come back at you, they will hit you for two damage. Which, considering you start with four, is very deadly. I would describe this game as hyper-lethal. It's very easy to die. Which is one reason why I have such an abysmally low completion rate. That's pretty standard with Spelunky. As is well known. Spelunky is a pretty well known, brutal game. And this is a roguelike. It's my favorite of the roguelikes. What I love about this game is it's just, it's like a tool for telling stories. Every adventure is a little different. So those statues you see with the dragon heads, those shoot arrows out at you. you gotta be very careful of them. But you can use the arrows for some useful things, as I'll show in a little bit. That is a damsel. Now damsels, if you can keep them alive to the end of a level, will uh, give you an extra heart. Hearts are very useful in this game, they're probably the most important resource you have. You also have four bombs, which you can use at your discretion, and four ropes. In general, if you're in a situation where either a bomb or a rope will help, use the rope, because bombs are more valuable. That's just a little piece of advice. Here I'm showing you can use rocks to set off these traps early. Deactivation of certain traps so you can get through is a very important thing in Spelunky. Now that golden skull you just saw that I picked up, again like Indiana Jones, when you pick it up, a giant boulder will try to squish you. But if you can get out of the way, you can take the skull, and it's worth about 5,000 bucks. Have I overwhelmed you with my little lecture here? Oh, okay. Well, that's good, because there's a lot more to come. Uh, looking up or pressing down will scroll the screen so you can see stuff at either side. They, of course, got this from Sonic the Hedgehog, I think. Where you could do the same thing. There may be some other games you could do that, but I doubt it. I'm showing there how you use a rope. Uh, you press the C button to cycle through the goods that you have, and X to launch whatever it is, so throw a bomb or throw a rope up in the air. The rope will go straight up until it hits some impediment, and then it will let the rope down. So you can actually hurt enemies with ropes. You can kill a bat with it, or later on, some other things. Now, I'm moving pretty fast through here. That's because I'm used to the way this game controls, and I'm holding shift down almost all the time to run. They are a little similar. There's a slight delay on the whip, so you got to be careful. I find this game easier than Castlevania, though. I have beaten this game. I have never beaten the original Castlevania. Even that crappy DOS version that my family, for some reason, owns. Did you know they came out with a version of Castlevania on DOS? It sucks all kinds of ass. Unlike this. You probably would never find it anyway. Anyway, in addition to taking the, sc the skull to the end of the level, you can also take it to a shopkeeper who will convert it into ready cash for you. Shops are an important part of this game. Um, 
Now you can buy stuff from the shops, you can also steal stuff from the shops. But you've got to be very careful about doing that because it puts you on the bad side of the shopkeepers and they'll come after you with their shotguns. I'm not sure whether you see that in this game. You might, you might not. I tend to be a good boy, you know. <laughs> I, I see a little bit of myself in this game. For instance, I always try to rescue a damsel when there's one available. And it's not misogynist. You can be a damsel, too, and save guys, so... In fact, you'll be seeing that pretty soon on Greg's channel. Stay tuned. God, I suck. God, I suck at this. I'm giving the teaser in the middle of the video. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> they don't need to come back. They need to stay here. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> I can't do that. Anyway, fall damage is a little weird in this game. In addition to f falling from a certain height, you will also get fall damage if you run really fast and fall from a lesser height. So I guess the idea is sort of a certain amount of momentum hurts you. Now, this is a chest. The chest and the key are always found on the same level. And when you put them together, you get a special artifact called the Ujat Eye, also known as the Eye of Horus. This game has a lot of Egyptian mythology themes. The nice thing about the Ujat Eye is that it shows you where all the hidden gems in the walls are, so then you can use bombs then to get more gems and stuff. Which just equals money, but money, as you'll see in this game, is kind of important. Not only is it your score, but you can also use it to buy a host of very useful items. I really love the music in this game. It's weird. The, like, remade version of this, with all the fancy graphics and stuff, I just don't like. The camera is zoomed in too much, and it's actually much harder to play. It has wonkier controls. Which is weird in a game that cost $15 when this one was free. But the biggest thing is, there's only, f like, five songs in this game, and I still like the soundtrack better than the full-priced release. Actually, the damsel will be stunned whenever you drop her from any height, and it doesn't hurt her. The damsel's kind of weird. They're almost like made of rubber or something. They don't get hurt by fall damage. They also don't get hurt by your whip, which leads to all sorts of uh, semi-disgusting situations. <laughs> um, they can be hurt by traps. They can be hurt by bombs. They cannot be hurt by most enemies, however, which is a little weird. Here I'm picking up a skull, you know, like Hamlet. And the weird thing is when you hold an object at that thing at the end of the level, she actually kisses just enough that it makes it look like she's kissing the object. So it looks like she's kissing the skull. Later, when you have a shotgun, it looks like she's kissing the shotgun, which is very disturbing. Um, yeah, this, this game's kind of interesting. One of the things I like about it is that it's a bunch of simple mechanics that interact together for truly emergent gameplay, just to use that now-hated phrase. But I really love this game. I have so much fun with it. And it's like, it's a game where you can insert your own story into it. Depending on how you interact with stuff. But I like to use skulls to attack enemies instead of rocks. Because skulls will break as soon as they hit something. So they can't rebound on you and cause damage. That's also true of, um... Oh wait, sorry. No, it's not. Um, arrows, if you throw them against a wall, can also hurt you. But arrows will disappear if they hit an enemy. The worst one to use is the rock, because the rock, even if it goes through an enemy, will bounce right off, and it's very easy to hurt yourself with it. On the other hand, they're free, so... These are all the easiest ways to go through the game. Now, you saw some f Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Buy this rock. Pet rocks weren't free. People paid like seven bucks for that crap. Not necessarily. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. Ooh, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I was going to say about that frog. Did you see the frog that exploded? So, the first area we were in is called the, the ruins, I believe. It's just, uh, <coughs> sorry, the caves. It's just a simple rocky area. This is called the jungle. As you can see, there's a lot more greenery in it. There's sort of wildlife in this one. It's a lot more tropical. Oh, and this is a little weird. I'll explain this in a second. 
But anyway, there are blue frogs, which have a very annoying pattern. They're hard to dodge because they jump randomly. The uh, like amount of distance they jump and the height, that's randomly determined based on where you are. Do you see that tombstone that says Ash on it? If you blow it up, you get a shotgun. It's a reference to Evil Dead. I don't know if it's the grave of Bad Ash or Good Ash, but who knows. Everyone knows Bruce Campbell was a total Bad Ash, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, you might have wondered why I'm jumping on all these hopping zombies. This is what's called a Restless Dead level. There are a few level conditions, as they're called, among the fans, which change the way the level looks. In this one, it's called The Dead Are Restless, and in this you see skulls everywhere, and there are hopping zombies, which are a traditional element of Chinese lore, and uh, vampires, though I didn't run into a vampire. Right now I am in the black market. Now when you get the Eye of Horus, the Ujad Eye, it will, in a certain level in the jungle, start blinking and letting out a noise that lets you know that the black market is near, but you have to blow up the entrance to it to reveal it. So once you do that, you have access to this place with all these nice shops, selling these wonderful bombs and other kinds of tools. I tend to buy a lot of bombs because I use them to get gems. Later on you'll see something even... exactly. It's an investment, buying bombs. And they, they encourage it. They sell so many bombs in the black market. What I just bought was some spider silk, basically. When you put it on your bombs, they become sticky bombs. You can also get that by killing a giant spider in the caves, but I didn't find one. Here's one of those orange frogs that blows up. Anything that hits them will cause them to start blowing up. Including these little uh, annoying sculptures here. These statues with the spikes that shoot out, those things will kill you in one hit. They cause four points of damage, which is your full starting complement of points. You might also notice that I was rolling some dice back there in the shop. That is a little gambling house, and in it you can roll the dice. If you get a total above seven, you earn money. Basically, you earn twice your money back. If you get below seven, you get nothing. And if you get exactly seven, you get the prize that's shown in the window. Basically, the way it's set up, there's almost always an incentive to play, because you have more than a 50% chance of getting something nice or doubling your money. But you can have a long losing streak, as I have found to my chagrin many times. But the, what I earned there is the, that glove that you can see in the top left corner. Those are climbing mitts, and they mean that you can hang on to any wall. Which is very convenient in all levels, but especially in the next group of levels that's coming up, which I will explain. God, I did not think I was going to have to go at such a breakneck pace with this exposition. <laughs> going too fast through these levels. So, did you see that little red flower? That is annoying. That is a man-eater. If you run into it, it will kill you instantly, no matter how much health you have. You have to either destroy it, or you have to knock it out with your whip and get past it. Another annoying thing, they will eat damsels. In some levels, a damsel spawns right next to a man-eating flower, and it eats it before you can get near the damsel. Which is horrifying, and I don't like it. It reminds me of Zombies Ate My Neighbors, where sometimes you will have a level where zombies will spawn right next to the people you're trying to save, and you literally can't win. You're just ruined by the bad luck. So this game's kind of like that sometimes. But it's not as hard as Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Anyway, you notice this large, barren, icy-looking place. These are the ice caverns. Do you see that caveman frozen in there? In the block of ice? If you blow up the ice, the caveman will actually be released, and he is alive. Of course, sometimes he's immediately blown up by your bomb anyway, so... I tend not to let them out. It's a waste of good bombs. Really? Terraria does look kind of like this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never played Terraria, so I wouldn't really know it. But this game, oh boy. I, I just play this game all this time all the time. This game is my Tetris. I play it where other people would play, you know, Candy Crush or stuff like that. Admittedly, it takes a bit longer than Candy Crush. But it's also not stupid. So this is a rough situation. You see where this damsel is? It's very hard to get to these. Generally, you have to use a rope. 
You may have noticed I often put down my shotgun when I'm trying to open a uh, pot. That's because if you just fire your shotgun willy-nilly, the shots will go all over the place and possibly kill a damsel. The one nice thing about randomly firing the shotgun... <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful. Trigger discipline. Um... Anyway, there's some dark levels, which is a condition we haven't seen yet, but we might in the future, where, with it being so dark, if you fire your gun constantly, no matter what it is, it produces a flash of light that illuminates the area. So you have an incentive to just keep firing like crazy, because there's no ammunition in this game, it just keeps firing forever. But the thing is, if you kill a damsel or anything like that in the level, the... Um, little screen at the end of the level will show you it. So you never live it down. It's like Pikmin. They might as well have just big text saying, Your fault. That also happens whenever you allow a damsel to die, which is just unfair. It lists it among your kills. It's like, I didn't kill her, she ran into the spikes. What an idiot. It's just like Lemming is all over again. Lemmings, Pikmin, these are games designed to cause you... Guilt suicide. It's horrible. Do you ever play Lemmings when you were a kid? Oh, that's an interesting one. My family had that too. I honestly. Kinda. Yes, it is. And funny to think it's all based on a Disney documentary that was wrong. Lemmings. Oh no! You know what? Yeah, you know what Lemmings reminds me of is Mr. Bill. It's like it's ostensibly aimed at kids, but not really. What it really is is adults having fun with cutesy stuff that gets destroyed. <laughs> A little too much. Yeah, enjoying lemmings to me is kind of close to, like, you know, pulling flies' wings off with tweezers or setting fires. It's that kind of behavior. No, I'm kidding. I enjoyed lemmings as a kid. Though it was way too hard for me. I've never been that great at puzzle games. Oh, shoot. I dropped my shotgun. The thing about this section is you never know if there's a gr if there's ground underneath you. So if you drop something, there's like a 50% chance you'll never see it again. So here I'm demonstrating that you can jump on top of UFOs, and they fall down and explode, which is one of the most satisfying things you can do in this whole game, is platforming on top of UFOs. You can also disorient them by whipping them, as I show here, but you gotta be careful to get out of the way of where they're landing, because they will explode with the force of a bomb. I was told that a bomb takes away 10 health, however I have had 11 health and been killed by a bomb, so I'm not sure I believe that, I think it's an insta-kill. One possibility is that, like, the radius of it causes 10 damage, so if you're in the periphery, you get 10, but if you're close up, you get hit that many times. So, those little cave guys, they're like the cavemen from earlier, but they're more obnoxious, they're yetis, and they will throw you all over the place, which they're the only ones that... Oh, no, sorry, they're not the only ones that do that, but they're the first enemies that do that. And that guy threw me down into the pit so that I lost my onk which I bought in the shop, and probably should have explained there. The Ankh gives you basically a free 1-up. It's the only thing in this game that gives you an extra life. And it costs 50,000 bucks, so it's expensive. The main purpose of the Ankh in, like, a super cool Let's Play, which is, this is not, is, um, to get to the City of Gold. Because to do that, you have to get into the big Moai-looking head in the ice caves, which contains the Hejet, which is an Egyptian headdress. If you get that, you can go through a magical door in this area, which is called the uh, Temple. And you'll end up in a city where literally all the bricks are gold. So if you have lots of bombs and you get there, you can rack up the points. I've had more than a million dollars in this game. So it's fun. So I just blew up that giant mummy-looking dude, and he leaves behind the Scepter. The Scepter is the best weapon in the game. It puts out these little purple bolts of energy that will run for every enemy, basically, and kill them. But you've got to be very careful using them, because they'll go after every living thing, including damsels. If you use one right next to a damsel, it will kill the damsel. 
So here you can see, you know, even when you just, like, lay the damsel down right next to you, she's still stunned. And if you leave her alone for too long, she will start running around in a panic. Because that's what you do. I mean, I would. While they're running around, they can easily fall off into spikes or lava or things like that. It is kind of like that. Which is great. That's the way to experience that game. In fact, I'm pretty sure the Resident Evil 4 HD edition had just a mute Ashley mode. Oh. Well, that sucks. Anyway, this lava is definitely something to be avoided. Not only in the strict sense of not going in it, but not going near it, because it will spawn lava guys, lava buddies, who will uh, kill you on impact, so they're not very nice. You may have noticed here the music just slowed down. That's because I've been dawdling too much and spent too much time in this level. If you dawdle, it'll say something like, time's running out, get out quickly, and the music will slow down. If you don't get out of there, a ghost comes, which can kill you in one hit. It was basically Derek Yu's, of make, Yu's way of making sure that people didn't just, you know, loiter, and that they had a time crunch. Once you get the head jet, if you get it, the ghost can't come anymore, so that means that you don't have to worry about time limits. But that's late in the game, so for most of even a very good game, you have to be careful of time. These little stone things that you've been seeing floating around are very annoying. They will also kill you instantly if you run into them. And any time they kind of see you when you get into their line of sight, they will fly in your direction in a straight line until they hit another object, as you see here. They're kind of like rooks, except they travel vertically. And yeah, they are very, very annoying. I have been killed by them possibly more often than any other creature in this game. Those little bird-faced guys you see going back and forth are kind of like yetis. They'll pick you up and throw you. But unlike the yetis, they freak out when they see you and try to run at you. They're very unpredictable, and it's very easy to get killed by them. So generally, I kill them before they even see me, as you see here. Don't be half safe. And that mummy just wandered right into the lava. One of the curiosities of a randomly generated game is that that can happen. Here I expertly blow up the skull so I can get it. Um, each of those skulls is protected by a trap, by the way. In the uh, caves, it's protected by the the rolling rock. In the jungle, if you find one, it'll be over a pit full of water, which you can fall into, and the stones around it will disappear, so you'll fall. Although it's not very deadly, it's the least of all of them. The one in the ice caves is a suspended above a pit of spikes, and it's resting on an ice platform that if you spend too much time on it will melt and you'll fall down. And then this one, if you pick it up without having like blown it out of its perch, it will uh, lock off both sides of the room, so to speak, and a bunch of spikes will come down and try to kill you. So your only way out is to bomb your way out. You may have noticed that that skull was worth considerably more than 5,000. As you go through the different levels of the game, each level you progress, the gems and money and stuff, they're worth more. The skulls don't go up with each level, but with each set of four levels, the new areas, they get $5,000 more valuable. So this one is worth 20,000, if you get it in here. The ones in the ice cave are worth 15,000 and so on. Here I'm demonstrating a little thing. Uh, not a lot of people know this, actually. If you run very fast and throw an arrow, it will stick in the wall. You can then use the arrow to climb up the wall. Your character will grip it like he would grip a ledge. By the way, this guy's name is just Spelunky Guy. <laughs> Even in the $15, you know, like, refurbished version, still just called Spelunky Guy. So here we see a bunch of uh, uh, villagers worshipping Olmec. And yes, this guy really is named Olmec, like the giant stone head in Legends of the Hidden Temple. He's exactly the same. Here I'm demonstrating something that you can only see if you have a way to get up really high, like the climbing gloves, or a lot of ropes. Above Olmec's chamber is just a bunch of platforms with gems galore, and, you know, crates where you can find cool stuff. It's definitely a good idea to get up here if you can. You may find more bombs, which can help you destroy Olmec. 
This fight actually is a lot like the fight against Bowser at the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. The purpose is to get under Olmec so he tries to squish you, and get him to destroy the floor under him so that he'll fall into the lava below. That is the only way to destroy him. He's invulnerable to all attacks. There you see I just opened up a, uh, a chest with a bomb in it. It's very easy to get caught off guard by those. I've been put in situations where I've opened one and I literally had nowhere to go. So they just killed me. It's such a frustrating experience when that happens. So I think I'm done gem collecting now. And I have this pitiful total because I didn't get to visit the City of Gold on this playthrough. In fact, uh, LP spoiler alert, in none of the first two playthroughs I've done so far do I get to the City of Gold. Maybe I'll do a future one where I get to that. I don't know, it kind of depends on the interest. I don't know how interested people actually are in this game. But yeah, here's the thing. So when you go under Olmec, he will go down very quickly. And after a while, when you do this, he will start letting out enemies through the gem in his head with everything you do. So you'll see it sooner or later. Here I'm trying to throw down some bombs to try to, you know, quicken the process. You can do this, but it's very tricky, because one bomb will send another flying in a somewhat unpredictable way. So you need to make... Exactly. You need to make sure you're well clear of the area. Because you just saw that one bomb flung the other, not down, but into the air. It's kind of fun, though, because if you arrange it right, you can almost do this like a shaped charge. Like, you could just drill straight down. Which, I've always loved shaped charges. I think they're cool. Oh yeah, and I die here. <laughs> you may notice, though, this is not the end of the video. That's because when I was recording this, I was so frustrated when I died that I thought, F this S, I am not going to let this game beat me, uh, and I'm just going to do a new playthrough. So yes, that was the exposition playthrough. Now we're actually going to beat this bastard. You can see here I have played it 474 times. That's not even the true extent of it, because I had to reinstall this game about six months ago, and before then I had about 5,000 plays. I wasn't kidding when I said this game was my addiction. So one of the things you can... It's randomly generated. It's a roguelike. Just like, uh, you know, Rogue Legacy and stuff like that. Correct. It is truly roguelike. Each level is independently generated. But kind of like Minecraft, it's generated according to a series of criteria. So there are certain, you know, um, how to put it. There are fixed structures that will appear from time to time. You'll notice them. One thing I like to look at in this game is you'll often see little shapes crop up that look like animals. Like, I see ones that look like rubber ducks all the time. It's just kind of fun to notice them. I've taken pictures of a few of them. Yes. What about them? So... So... Kali is uh, one of the many mythological elements in this. As you know, she is the Hindu god of destruction. Or rather, she's the consort of Shiva in his guise as the god of destruction. Hinduism's very complicated. Anyway... <laughs> um, if you sacrifice guys to Kali, uh, you basically get points for each one. These little cavemen guys are worth the least. Or rather, that's not entirely true, but of the ones you're likely to sacrifice. Vampires and killer plants are worth the least, because they have no blood. And Kali wants blood. You get one for them, basically. Two for cavemen. And you get more, like four for the yeti guys, and for these uh, eagle guys. The first four you give, you will get a random item from Kali. Often something like the goggles, or um, the climbing gloves, or a compass, something like that. Uh, then, with four more points, you get the Kapala, which I don't know if I get it in this one. But the Kapala is a little artifact which heals you when you collect blood from enemies. So every time you hit the enemies, you may have been noticing little blood spatters coming out. You actually collect those in the Kapala when you win them. Then, after uh, eight more points, I think, she will give you 99 bombs. She will fill out your bomb capacity. And then, after eight more from that, she will give you eight more health points. With the thing that says, you feel rejuvenated. And after that, I think every time you give her eight more, she will give you eight more health points. So that's a good way to make sure you're almost unkillable in this game. Here I'm trying to sort of suss out this stone guy. And it's not working very well. 
You may be wondering how I got to the temple so quickly when I started a new game. Um, when you go through this game, you run into a tunnel-making guy, who, if you give him enough money and do special conditions, will build shortcuts for you. So I have a shortcut to this section of the game. In fact, I have a shortcut to every section of the game, because I've played it like crazy. And I was not going to subject your viewers to an entire other playthrough of this. I was just going to go through the thing again. The thing about going to the temple early is that on the one hand, you're less likely to die in the earlier levels, so you're more likely to win. But on the other hand, you have no chance to get extra items and helpful stuff in the other levels. So it's sort of a mixed bag. Sometimes it could make it easier for yourself, and sometimes it makes it harder. I almost never use them when I'm playing normally. But this is a special occasion, and we are going to kill this guy. My mistake last time was using bombs. A man should never rely on a bomb when he can rely on himself. I think Sock... Sofa... Sophocles said that. Anyway. It, it would've, but I was impatient, and I paid for it. With death, and then I learned and came back. Just like Odin. Dark Souls is Norse mythology, basically. <laughs> Dark Souls is more accurate to Norse mythology than the Thor movie was. But anyway... I, I know, I know. It was pretty faithful compared to the comics. In that it was crap. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm really a bug about Norse mythology. Never ask me about Marvel's version. Only do it if you can make it funny. That's what's important. Or are you not talking about Let's Play? You can make, like, a funny build. I've heard there are funny character builds in Dark Souls. Have you ever played it before? So here what I'm doing is generally the best way to beat him, just go back and forth and allow him to cut, basically carve a hole for himself. And you will see here in a minute, you may already have seen it, how when he does certain hits, he will send out three little bolts of yellow magic. Each one of those turns into a monster, an enemy, including the annoying spiders who always want to drop in on you at this point and hurt you. Yes, but the the nice thing is that mm -hmm. but the nice thing is that Olmec will crush all of his own monsters. So if you can avoid them, usually they get killed pretty quickly. Now what I've done here is a very terrible idea if you don't have any ropes because you can't get back up again. If you don't have any ropes, you have to do a much trickier thing where you sort of lead him down this diagonal path so that you can always jump back up to the next step. Ow. Oh. Drop two snakes on my head, why don't you? So now we see him sink below the lava, as he ought to. And that little thud you just heard is the door opening, so now we can finally leave. But not until we deal with all of these monsters who spawned that I hadn't dealt with yet. Yeah, if you, if you let Olmec go down a long time, and it's kind of random where the monsters go, but you can end up with just a huge pile of monsters on one side of the screen or another. And it's always hilarious when they jump straight into the lava. The, the, the thing about those little cave guys is they'll do that too. If you don't stop them, they will run straight into the lava just blindly. Here I'm just blowing them up because I'm having a little celebration, you know, throwing ropes in the air. I'm happy I won, you know? I had been through some, some stressful situations earlier. So now, it is finally, this is the end of the game. This whole time you've been searching for a great treasure. And here it is. I don't know who designed this chest. It's frickin' big for a normal human. But you get a giant golden skull, which is all anyone can ask for in life. And you get flung out of a volcano, which is erupting, which I would think would burn you to a crisp, but whatever. I'm a cool guy. I've been... I've covered volcanoes, you know. 
and then you get your final score. And it's always a bitter disappointment to me when I get less than a million. Because <laughs> I've become a pretentious ass about this game. But I saved exactly one damsel, which is just enough for the ending screen to make sense. And you get this nice little reminder. Because um, in the ending, I think this always happens, but it might be only if you've saved a damsel. You um, have a damsel walking along behind you on one of your camels. Oh no, sorry, she's on the skull. I don't know where these cavemen servants that I've got come from, <laughs> because all the cavemen are dead. Maybe I have the magic power to summon them now? Who knows? But the damsel sure is happy bouncing there. And I love that camel. That camel is some fantastic pixel art, considering how low res this game is. So yes, this is Spelunky. Uh, it was made by a very small team. In fact, mostly just Derek Yu. Two people wrote the soundtrack, which is only like five or six songs, but whatever. It's a great soundtrack. Very atmospheric. And I hope you've all enjoyed this playthrough of Spelunky. Pretty soon we're going to be doing the flip side version, because you can play as a damsel. And I'm acting like this is the end of the video when it's not. I don't know why I got confused. Because I'm going to show you some of the extra content. If you push that stone all the way back, by the way, you will reset your entire game. All your scores will be cleared. You won't have any of this. the shortcuts you've sent through. I'm not going to do that. I was just showing off sort of what it was. Also, if you climb up that rope, that is one way to quit the game. The other is just to X out the window, of course. But here we have four challenge rooms. You get these for excelling at the game in certain respects, like do it as fast as possible, get the most money. The one at the top is the sun room. This is a special game where your job is to keep yourself and the damsel alive as long as possible. So it's time-based. As you can see, there's four crushing stones trying to hurt you, and there are bombs dropping from the ceiling, and arrows all over the place. It's madness. But that's the idea. Oh, see, I'm already dead. <laughs> The next one, the Moon Challenge. This is probably my favorite. In it, you get a bow and arrow and a little trampoline to bounce on, and you have to destroy as many enemies as possible. The bow mechanics are a little weird. I didn't show this off in the regular game. When you have a bow, you hold down X to draw the bowstring, and then, depending on how long you've held it down, you get more distance. In this game of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, they really won't get much distance flying like that, but... Anyway, when this starts out, you just have a bunch of bats. But eventually you start getting, I think, one other enemy type. I think you have to kill enough bats for it to happen, but you might not. You get UFOs! And there are a few things I like more than destroying UFOs with arrows. Because it's delightfully anachronistic. That reminds me of your Hunter from the Future. For Spoonie fans out there. We will need a lot more hemp before we're through. Uh, and yeah, you can exit this place by leaving the door or by killing yourself on the spikes. This is a weird one. You get a shotgun in the Star Challenge and you have to kill all these angry shopkeepers. Who will try to steal a shotgun from you, as you see. If they even touch you, they will take the shotgun and kill you almost instantly. Uh, well, it's not so bizarre. Lots of people who play this game anger shopkeepers constantly. And it's the same mechanics in this as you have when you anger them in the game. They'll fly around like this and they'll try to hurt you. They're very unpredictable, that's the thing about it. The way this little room is designed also makes it hard for you to dodge them. It makes it easy for them to spring on you from behind. Plus, they randomly drop out of these four holes. So you really gotta be on your toes in this one. You start off with 8 health, but if you take all of the bullets from a shotgun blast, that will kill you in one hit. Not to mention it'll stun you to get hit by a shotgun, so you're likely to get hurt just as much when they when you wake back up again, because they'll have gone on you in the meantime. Spiders also fall in this one, the only real point of that is to distract you. And he got me. And this finally is the changing room. The changing room allows you to turn into a damsel. It's my favorite of the rooms because the damsel has some really funny animations. For instance, when you look up, she has this really weird giraffe neck thing. I also like the way she scoots when you have her uh, lying down. It's like she's kind of inchworming along. Other than that, a lot of her animations are the same as they are in the main game. Like when she runs, it's the panicky motion, which is a little weird. 
Uh, here I'm just showing off the little tutorials. I'm also showing off when you get all four rooms, you can turn into the tunnel guy. His special ability is that he always has a pickaxe. You can get pickaxes, or maddox as they're called, uh, in the game itself, but when you play as this guy, you have one permanently. It replaces the whip. The thing about a maddox is it can cut through rock the same way that a bomb does. So as you can see here, it makes it much easier. But this guy only has two hit points, so it's way easier for him to die. In fact, a single fall can kill him, and often does. Now the weird thing about the tutorial, the way it's designed is, when you destroy these blocks, since you're not expected to, you don't get the gold from it like you normally would. The dwarves would be very disappointed. I'm just showing off kind of how platforming with this guy works and how you can use him to get through areas that would otherwise be impassable. Uh, and uh, hurting him, of course, because that's what you do. I think this guy's really cool. He's the one thing that actually they improved in the, the second version. Because in the paid version, you can play as this guy and lots of other guys like him. There's a lot of different characters in the extended one. I do, in fact, have it. Uh, I just don't like it. I don't want to keep anyone away from it if they like it. I mean, if you're not used to the mechanics of this game, the mechanics of that one probably seem better. But I'm so used to this one, it's hard to change. Please support Derek Yu. If you like this game, consider trying the full one. Give it a shot. It's definitely worth looking into. <laughs> well, no. Th there's lots of great things about this the sequel version of it. It's just that what I like about this game is not something that would be enhanced by a sequel. You know how it is. Um, when you leave with the rope method, you get another ending. More of a sort of bittersweet, at least you made it out with your life ending. Uh, you didn't really do anything, but... I like the fact that this game has a credit sequence and an ending, even if you decide to quit early. Because, you know, it, it, it reinforces the concept of this guy being your character. You know, sometimes you, you're not going to risk your life, you know? Just head back to civilization. You've seen horrible things. It's kind of weird. In the uh, extended version, they imply that every time the character dies, they don't really die. They get sent back to the beginning. So they work it into the premise of the game. Isn't it? But cool. Which, uh, weird but cool kind of sums up this whole game. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope everyone at home has enjoyed watching. And Greg and I will see you for whatever thing he or I do next. Good night.